Te Ninui, um, yeah, I hand it over to Mara, who's much more organised than me. Mm. Um, kia ora. Uh, uh, you're going to drive it? Okay. In a random way, yeah. Yep. Next slide, please. Sure. <laughs> yeah, so I think we're going to go quite quickly through it um, so that we can get to the actual toolkit, which is what we produce at the end of the three years. Um, but I guess just to say that our project advisory group was established right at the start and they advised us the whole way through and it was comprised, oh actually, it might be on the next slide. It was comprised of Tanga Tafirua and Tanga Tafirua. Oh, so we had some, we had about 50% on the whenua from different parts of Aotearoa. Um, and we had uh, a grey one pit from Kompedes, uh, Environmental Defence Society. Um, Catherine Short, who has just started a new, you're up and back now, a new journey, aren't you? Open space. Yes, but she's very clever, very clever. <laughs> yes, so all of these guys. Um, so, I, yeah, the reason why we're emphasising this is to say that all of the bindings we had um, and all of the ideas we came up with in the toolkit that we produced, I guess, is um, it's like a combination, a culmination of ideas and order or cardo that came from all of these people um, and a whole lot of others that we engaged with over the, t the three years um, through different workshops and uh, online surveys and things like that that um, and also we had three uh, case studies, three key case studies um, to represent the three spheres of influence so we're using that Matiki Mai Constitutional Transformation um, framework of the three spheres of influence which um, is to say that for Māori to get the changes we need in terms of policy and legislation and the system um, we need to be uh, making influences within the Rangatira Tanga Sphere, the Kawana Tanga Sphere, and the Relational Sphere, or what we're calling the Oriti Tanga Sphere. So we had a case study in each of those. Um, yeah, and so I think that would come through in the presentation. Um, yeah, so our, the research was basically an analysis of Kaisi Tanga and ecosystem based management. So we were asked to enable both side by side. Um, and to start with a comparison of the two. Um, and I guess through our literature review, um, we found that there's a lot of um, academics and researchers looking at uh, different types, of, especially indigenous um, management approaches, or what do they call it, indigenous ecological knowledge, and that kind of stuff. Um, and then they'll look at a Western framework and. Um, and they'll kind of talk about them and then they'll justify and rationalise why they're so good. And then it's like, oh, we've just gone and see why it's so good and why we need these things. And we already know all that. Like, we know that Kaisiakatanga is um, the right way to be managing um, and that our system isn't set up for it exactly anymore. And so rather than having another project that looks at what Kaisiakatanga is, this is more about what are the conditions we need to enable Kaitiakitanga so that whoever, whichever group, whichever mana whenua group is um, applying Kaitiakitanga, they can define what that means. Um, and so how can we help to create the right conditions so that they can determine that and put it in place. So that's what I'm talking about this program to help them. Um, and the reason that we're focusing on the sort of ethics of care is obviously um, Kaitiakitanga is not only about the environment, it's, it is about caring for our environment, it's about caring for lots of different things, um, depending on the context. Um, and there's a lot of research around as well that looks at um, ethics of care as being more than just um, you know, using your head and thinking in capitalist terms where how a lot of our um, systems operate, but more about being heart-led. Yeah, more caring, I guess, um, changing and more respectful, more reciprocity, all those good things that we actually need to be bringing back and remembering that this is the way of um, acting responsibly. Yeah. Do you want to be here? No, no, I know it's not too long. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that, so that led us to this 
careful research, we were very careful because, well, even the saying that we're doing research in Kaitiakitanga, you know, you go into a room with Māori and I'll go, oh, well, you can't tell us what Kaitiakitanga is, and we're like, well, it's not actually what we're trying to do, of course we can't, that's for you to define in your place. Um, that, so there were those tensions, but then the bigger tension for us personally was around um, having to make a comparison between ecosystem-based management and Kaitiakitanga when they're so unequal in the system that we operate in now, you know, the resource management system. Um, it's there, yeah, I hope that I don't have to explain that too much, but ask me about that otherwise. But so trying to be, um, trying to find ways that we could make a comparison carefully in a way that upheld the integrity of um, Te Ao Māori and Mātauranga and all the things that we valued and actually disrupted that privileging of the ecosystem as management Western Pākehā side of it, which was quite difficult and it actually took us about three or four different goes at it, different approaches, so, but we finally got there I think, so. Yeah. Some of the analysis around that too was, um, I guess we see, you know, with Western science, yeah, and we know that that's not an exact term in the of itself in terms of its whakapapa, but with Western science you tend to go down into the granular line, so there's a lot of examinations of where, for, why, how about the particular parts of Western science, but um, obviously with Te Ao Māori there's an open universe that we're seeking to um, be able to encapsulate or communicate within our mahi, so there's that kind of, um, you know, one very well documented and that's very, uh, you know, about the data sets and another one that's a hell of a lot about lived experience and that you've got, once you've got um, Te Maraka Te Ratanga in there and um, Oriti Tanga and um, Wa Mana Motuhake, you know, being a big thing for us now that really teaches the context. So it was super important for us, obviously also being from Te Ao Mark Tung Tina ourselves, that we made sure that we are our communities with our work. So hence the social justice comes through really strongly. Um, and our commitment to our communities, not doing pop in and out as researchers and say, yeah, we're going to be here for five minutes because we've got some research money, you know, for three years, but that we actually have to be dedicated to our communities long term. So, you know, those long term intergenerational relationships, which are more than just being able to say what your baby name is, it's because you get on your heart and you're going to get on So, um, <laughs> those, you know, uh, things that we joke about, but it's really, really important to make sure that we, um, yeah, that we do, that we're answerable to our home people. So, um, yeah, I think uh, also what Lara is highlighting is that there's a lot of um, presence and there's a lot of um, support that's already given to ecosystems based management if you go on the basis of sort of environmental justice or uh, restoration, regenerative practices. Et cetera, et cetera, that talk about the restoration of the tie up. But to be able to really support Tino Life and Tira Tiger, the Mana Motu Haki, in the place that we currently see ourselves within, we need to um, look at how can we more strongly support that side of things in order to be able to enable both of our systems to work together well, to be able to put them on, hopefully, at the very least, an equal footing so we can make one or two. Um, yeah, I'll hand back to Lara to talk about some of the workshops that our team head of the durational project. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> so cute. Um, that's my son, Kaki. That's a next generation. <laughs> <laughs> and our mother, I think, so he can talk about any of the project. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's just a few different expressions of Kaki. But there's a, this is kind of what we were thinking our research was leading towards. Um, it's definitely context based, um, it's all about context. Um, but it's multi-scalar as well because if we are wanting to achieve um, Papatuanuku scale um, regeneration and restoration and care for Papatuanuku and Hoanginui, then we're looking at having, you know, um, practicing kaitiakitanga in our rohi, but then all the other ones need to be doing it too, so it's scaling up to have that whole whenua um, cared for. Um, and so I guess with our tools that we develop, we're trying to think, well, how do we try and enable equitable um, kaitiakitanga so that everyone is enabled to um, do it within their own um, place where they have fun at, not to pass it. Um, 
Um, there's a really beautiful video there where Lara speaks very articulately to this, and we will send you the link afterwards. Yeah. So, moving on to um, uh, partially actually, um, uh, Matua Tani was talking about in terms of our talk on the tanga and how that does or doesn't kind of play out on a day to day basis um, with our mahi now. Um, and yeah, well, I mean, obviously, we walk in, in the footsteps of our tikuna, but our ability to be able to um, deliver upon the tikuna is very much watered down. Um, and system now and so some of the words that have been um, for some of the real that our ancestors used and also their position is talking about always like I said, we might be able to be there in our full selves and take that kind of responsibility back to our people or follow through on that um, within our contemporary context. So I think you know one of the really challenging things for us is to have a think about how do we draw upon our mataranga and be able to understand that and use it within our contemporary society with respect to our ancestors, but also be able to evolve it on a day-to-day -day basis. When I was working on our treaty claims in 2012, I think it was at home in Mahi Wairo, one of my uh, kamatua then said to me that, you know, he had his tikanga for his time, and, um, but then, you know, when I get to his ripe old age, um, <laughs> that I'll have tikanga that is appropriate then, so that these things are not set in concrete, but that obviously we learn from those that go before us. Um, my uh, ancestor, one of my tikona on the um, Pahawera side was a, a tokuna um, and um, there's been a lot of discussion about sort of Māori land loss and tataia loss etc um, which comes up regularly but I've actually I've noticed a, a gap in terms of the Tōkuna Suppression Act being talked about and having a korero about that in terms of what that means in terms when it comes to the tile, when it comes to mātauranga, when it comes to our responsibility with people. Um, Tōkonga Tanga, I think, has been uh, really watered down in terms of it's been wrongly understood as something that's quite um, ephemeral, and that's very specific only to the wider side of things in terms of it being healing um, and somewhat, like, compared to um, shamanism or other cultures, which is not a lot of here. So, uh, with my understanding of our Tōkonga one of the elements of it in terms of healing people is to actually be able to understand their whakapapa, their connection to place, their environment, their whānau, so it's a holistic, even the healing side of things, it's a holistic healing that's integrated with your environment, it's not decontextualising it from that, so you're not lifting the knowledge from that place. Going back to what Lara was saying about kaitiakitanga, that that is for the home people to decide what their tikanga is and what their kaitiakitanga looks like for their particular place. Um, so, um, and I'm just going to confess that I'm really nervous because I'm in the room. <laughs> but uh, um, our explanation of Tukori Tukori Ao Marama is looking at, at the circular nature um, of Mataranga, uh, that constant evolution. And what Tukori Tukori Ao Marama can be understood as a, um, a sort of a linear progression through um, the start of well, to Alpha Kapapa from Uha. Um, from the womb through all the different stages of the night um, through to uh, which is um, the Tikore, then Tikore, first stages of the night to Te Ao Marama and um, within those things there are tapu, noa, mana, wairua, ho, maori, these are kind of like our moko our whakapapa that run through there in terms of our tikana and how we manage within all those different stages. Um, the way that we've understood kaitiakitanga as a holistic system is that that could be both a macrocosm and a microcosm um, and that it's in every single element and it's also the big picture. It's me attempting to be a synopsis, so I don't mind that science communication. Um, but the, the te ao marama, you know, the day-to-day -day basis that we've got now within our contemporary systems, to us that makes sense with uh, Western science, you know, it's very clear and now and what's going on and whether we've taken notice of it, it's about technology, it's about developing new tools, it's reflective of a relatively, um, can be a short period of time, um, and it's uh, kind of self-referential within that day-to-day -day basis, 
what to put into te ao marama and a tikanga based way of doing things uh, gives us is an uh, ethics of place and ethics of people and a responsibility long term of time to uh, the uh, tikanga behind us and in front of us. So it gives that relationality that sometimes when we're sitting with an academia and you know comparing all the knowledge around the world and trying to you know put the best out of them. Um, that relationality, the social justice that we were talking about, really a responsibility to get removed from that. Um, sometimes a drop that just better than I say mm-hmm. words, so mm-hmm. I need to talk. <laughs> um, I was say a little bit more um, about how we got there. I, yeah, so this was part of our conceptualising, you know, the comparison of Western science and um, Kaitiakitanga, or ecosystem based management and Kaitiakitanga. Um, and all the information we're getting from through our research, um, and all yeah, it's just quite overwhelming. And we're thinking like we need to visualize this in some way. We need to simplify it, um, and it, and we need to be able to um, easily sort of communicate to people that don't understand the Maori worldview how much depth there is. And when you're trying to um, you know have these projects, where you've got. EBM or some other kind of Western science that's sitting alongside or, or trying to bring in a little bit of Mato on the other side. There's all this that they have to be bringing in and I don't think they realise that. And so it's trying to explain it in a hopefully more easily, easy to digest way. Um, <laughs> um, and also the other thing, you know, um, Tamano Te Wai was all the rage in the last 10 years, but so in that focus on mana, to mana more to why, and then you know people start to get familiar with that term, and that's great, and you're accepting that term, and it's in policy, and um, we're all trying to give effect to it. But then there's often this, they're missing out on all the other stuff. It's not just mana on its own. There's a whole lot of things in there. Um, so trying to communicate that as well. Um, yeah. And so and the other thing I think as well is that Western science. Um, can fit within kaitiakitanga if, if a kaitiaki chooses to use Western science, but kaitiakitanga can't fit inside Western science. So you can't put that under that. You can the other way around because does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Western, yeah. yeah. Western, Western science with the granular side of things has got a hell of a lot to offer in terms of us being able to understand how we move forward with the global mm-hmm. universe, but um, the intergenerationality and the talking and It's because Western ethics. scientists don't have um, fun. So they can't be Kaitiaki. So that's, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, so that's what I was trying to say. But Kaitiaki can use Western science if they want to. Anyway, okay. Oh, well, should we go to the. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Five minutes. We'll talk to these codes and then just ask for some questions because I think this is like the guts <laughs> that we're talking about going through time and after and we can't take it from the next. We've got three, we came up with three tools for our toolkit and one of them was the Toru Namiya, so um, the, this formula, the simple formula. Um, yeah, the simple formula that we want to get across all people, all agencies, all spaces, because um, basically it means kaitiakitanga equals Rangatira tanga plus mataronga plus tikanga. And um, if you're Māori, you're probably thinking, oh, it's not that simple, um, it's, there's so much more to it. But if you're a policymaker sitting in the Ministry for the Environment, and actually we've got some feedback further down, um, they're like, oh, this makes sense. Kaitiaki tanga does require you know, authority and leadership from Māori. That's the rangatira aspect. So, then they start looking at, well, where is that in our project? And then where's the matauranga? And who, who holds that? And where, where is it being created? Um, and how are we going to look after it? All those, that's the tikanga. And so they start seeing there's these three aspects we need to be looking at, even if it is a tick the box. At least the box is getting bigger than just the one kind of box. Um, and, yeah, and because it's so simple, I feel like it's something they can, they'll be able to pick up. But it's also important for us as mana whenua and as kaitiaki to be thinking about these things when we're engaging with councils and others as well, because when we go into those spaces and they're like, oh, we want to add some matauranga into this policy document or whatever. And so you might go and help them with some wording or something, but actually it's important to be thinking, okay, so where is our rangatiratanga in this? Um, who have they spoken to? Is it the right people? Um, you know, and where's the matauranga come from? Who do I need to go speak to? 
and what is the tikanga around this, you know? So, the tools that we've come up with are hopefully helpful for both Manawhenua and for the agencies. And we've got in the actual kit itself um, guidance for both. Yeah, so just, so yeah, so just here, that's all right. It's with you 
so yeah, we will offer that up online, and of course, as per tea, gonna, um living, growing documents as well. We'd like to you know, keep on building each other's practices and making these things much more accessible for people. So, kia ora for your time, and thank you for um, uh, putting up with or supporting our uh, creative and interactive way that we're to share work. Kia ora. First of all, thank you to Tane, um, for the work that you do and for your strong support through this whole and Catherine, and, 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 uh, and Alison sitting on the floor up there, who actually probably helped start all of this for it. Mm. And snuck in and hit by the guys there, so if you want to find out. I'm going to use photo there, but we might not be at all. But um, when it comes out, we will release it because it is a really beautiful set of tools for people's organisations, so we will be putting it out there on our socials to get it so that I can access it. Thank you, Fido, for your patience. I, we do need you to, like, fuck around all the way back to the main room, please, um, because the shuttles, the local safety.